to make a radio controlled starship that can take off and land vertically. Just like SpaceX, I don't think we can start with a final concept, which is fairly ambitious. So we're going to have to start a bit simpler. So let's make a radio controlled star hopper first. Starhopper is SpaceX's test platform for propulsion and control, and I'll be using mine for the same reason so that we can scale up to more advanced hardware and techniques later. Mine will use two brushless motors with 8-inch propellers for propulsion housed inside the main body where the fuel tanks would normally be. I'll use differential throttle for yaw control, and two vanes to vector the thrust at the bottom for roll and pitch control. I'm curious just how much control authority I can get with the system paired with my flight control code, so let's build it to find out. I'm using foam board you can buy at the dollar store for the main construction. This foam is easy to glue with hot glue and can be cut and bent to shape very easily. First I'm sketching and cutting out the internal frame which I'll mount the electronics to. I want to keep most of the weight toward the top so that the vanes in the bottom will have a large enough moment arm to give good control authority. So I'll mount the motors as close to the top as possible and keep the top of the star hopper open for airflow for now. The internal structure that I have in mind looks like a plus, so I'm gluing the two rectangular sections together at a 90 degree angle. I hinge the control surfaces by cutting a 45 degree bevel on their edge and then tape them on. You can see they're able to freely rotate, which is what we want for adequate control. Before wrapping this all in the circular exterior, I want to mount the motors and electronics while it's still accessible. I 3D printed these simple motor mounts, which can just be hot glued to the foam. One motor will be in a tractor configuration at the top and the other will be a pusher at the bottom. It's important that the propellers will spin in opposite directions to counteract the torque and allow me to control yaw. In between the two motors, I'll mount the electronic speed controllers, flight controller, and leave room for the battery later. The flight controller is a Teensy 4.0 running my open source Dreamflight flight control code. I'll talk more later about configuring that for this vehicle after we finish the build. The last thing I need to do for the electronics is install the servos for the control surfaces. I'm first installing the control horns with some hot glue, then using paper clips with a Z-bend at each end to act as the control rod. This attaches to the servo and I can glue that directly to the surface of the foam. Finally, I'll plug the servos and motors into the flight controller and tape down messy wires and the electronics are done. This doesn't look quite like Starhopper yet, so let's wrap the internal structure with foam to give it that beautiful cylindrical water tower look. Much better. Last thing to do is cut out some landing gear in the form of some triangles and glue them to the outside. I'm bracing the outside of the landing legs with some wooden dowel rods to keep them from breaking or bending on hard landings. Foreshadowing. Okay, so the build is done, now we just need to program it to fly. I'm going to hop into my dream flight code in Arduino and scroll down to the control mixer function. First I assign throttle output to both motors so I have direct throttle control. Then each motor gets plus or minus yaw PID variable, which is the stabilized variable for the yaw axis generated by the code's PID controller. I don't know the signs required for this variable assignment, but we'll check later to verify that things are being stabilized in the right directions. The servo for roll control will get an offset value between 0 and 1 to center the servo, and I'll also add the roll PID variable to stabilize the servo based on roll movement. The same process is done for the pitch servo. I want this vehicle to be stabilized on angle set point, so I'll scroll up to the main loop and make sure that the angle controller is being used, and then scroll up to the variable declaration section to adjust some parameters. I'm setting my max roll and pitch angle to 30 degrees and max yaw rate to 150 degrees per second. Then I'll set some starting controller gains which we'll tune later. Okay, this is the first time powering up the star hopper, so let's check the control functions. First off, I need to center the control surfaces, so I'll adjust my servo offset variables and re-upload the code. Much better. Now to check that the code is stabilizing each axis in the proper direction. To do that, I'm just tipping the star hopper over and looking at the control surface to see the direction it's deflecting. It should be deflecting to prevent the vehicle from moving in that direction anymore. In this case, the roll axis is actually opposite, so I'll go back into the control mixer in the code and change the sign of the stabilized PID variable for that servo. After some trial and error getting the code set up and stabilizing properly, I think we're finally ready for a test hop. This is the first test with the starting gains I set. Looks like it needs some work. Let me go tune the PID gains properly and get back to you.
So one problem I'm experiencing is that the vehicle is a little heavy, so when the yaw starts to drift, one motor spools up to full throttle and the other spools down quite a bit. This leads to a net loss of thrust because one motor is saturating at full throttle while the other keeps decreasing. You can see in the flights that when the yaw starts to drift, it starts to lose altitude. I'm going to replace the props with slightly larger ones and decrease weight with a smaller battery. I also added another control surface to help with yaw and lightened up the landing legs a bit. Another thing I'm learning is that the controller gains for a vehicle like this need to be way higher than something like a quadcopter, with a lot more damping too. So after tuning it, I've got this thing flying around pretty decently, though I already have plenty of ideas for how to improve the next iteration. I've never built a vehicle configuration like this, so it was fun to tinker with it and get it working with my flight control code. I'll keep working with this platform, and in the future I'd like to build a full Starship model that can fly up to high altitude, skydive down, and land vertically. You can find more information in the description about my flight controller that you can build and use for projects just like this. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing to stay up to date with more fun and interesting projects in the future. Thanks.